Today I show you how to kind of make this. It's nothing real fancy, but it's one of the tools that Blender has. It's a cool little thing. I don't know, this reminds me of Tron for some reason. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Or one of those stone guys from Easter Island. Anyway, <laughs> stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Kevin with Inventmark, and today I'm going to be showing you about curves. This little thing here, when you press Shift A, you get to normally we use the meshes, so that's what we've been learning so far. Today I'm going to show you about the curves. There's the bezier, circle, nerves, nerve circle, path. The only one I'm really going to show you today is the bezier. I'll show you a little bit of the circle. And then I'm going to show you the surface nerves, because they're uh, a little bit different, but basically the same concept. There's just a instead of a one-dimensional object, you're working with a two-dimensional object. It's actually a three-dimensional object, but you're basically working with two dimensions to make a three-dimensional object. It's kind of like going from one dimension to the next, but it's confusing. Anyway, let's get started. So here is the, the Bezier curve. I just added that. You can add it there, or you can actually go up to the tools and create the and click here. All the basic ones are here. The uh, surfaces, I don't see them there. But so I, I use the Shift A anyway for everything. But anyway, what it does is it makes this little curve here, and you can manipulate this object around and do all kinds of stuff with it. And if you click on one of the middle points because usually at each end there you have the middle point which is the actual spot and then you have the two ends which you can grab you can press G to grab it or R to rotate it around they just kinda make the intensity of the curves go around and it's how you shape it basically uh, but I, what I like to do with these is I like to use these to like make tubes and things like that Usually when you start off it's just a half tube with a curve and to get it to look like anything you have to come down here to the geometry and change the bevel depth. So then it looks just like a basically all it is is a two line shape so you wanna it's kind of like a cylinder, it's a half cylinder and so right now it's basically a half square and to get more shape out of it you need to turn the resolution out basically it just adds more uh, faces along the edge and I don't know why this starts out it starts out in smooth mode but you can change the shading to flat so when you look at it it's not smooth shading uh, you gotta do that in object mode not edit mode so press tab to get back in object mode and press tab to get back to where we were but anyway it's, so it turns it into like uh, a half pipe there and you can change it into a uh, full and it's got these others the front half it's just like a quarter of it and the back is just another quarter of it but I like to use the full and basically it just makes a tube and you can do the same thing with the uh, this is pretty much any mesh you can at the if it's at one of the ends you can hit extract press E and it basically extends the whatever you're working on you can grab it around and move it around and manipulate it make whatever shape you want basically this is good for making all kinds of different weird curved surfaces if you need to for like tubes and things like that for, for 3D modeling you can use it for a few things I don't know there's probably quite a few applications you could use it with but the uh, main thing is for like uh, animation and things like that or just making things it's used for like that and to make this a solid object there's two things you can do if you just want to leave it like that and, and actually turn it into a solid pipe you actually have to turn it into a mesh first and to do that you press alt C and it gives you two options here and you want to use mesh from a 
curve meta surf text. And next week I'll be getting into the text. Uh, this week I'm just showing you the curves, but it's the same feature, Alt-C, to turn it into an actual mesh. So now if we go into tab mode, after turning it into a mesh, it shows that it's actually a mesh with all the different vertices and faces and everything's basically solid now. And to make it a completely solid object, what we can do is just to focus on there, press the decimal point on the keypad and it focuses on that spot. It's a handy tool to use. I use it quite often. But you can hold Alt and right click on the edge and it will select all the ones around there and if you press F it will create a face. So it makes that solid. So if we click on an edge over there, go down here and Alt, click the whole thing and then press F, it creates another face. So basically that object is a solid object now. And so that's basically how you do that to create that type of solid object. I'll go ahead and show you the next one here. Let's make another curve real quick here. And show you what it can do. So I'm going to focus on that spot there. So what this is does, we need to go to the modifiers area with the wrench. Click on modifiers and then go all the way down here to solidify. What it, what it does is it takes any flat plane object, because basically we had a flat cylinder and it turns it into a solid object by creating an edge for it. And once again this made it smooth. I don't know why it does that, but <laughs> it just does. So turn it into flat, you can see this better. But you can basically make it a solid object. That's actually inside of it. Because if you <laughs> it's kind of weird to do that, but you can actually look inside of objects because you can see the normals are all different. I don't know if I've explained normals or not yet. But it's basically the outside face is, is the normal, the opposite is inverted normal. But anyway, you can change the size and do that. And to convert it, all you need to do is press Alt-C and then it becomes a solid object and you have a tube there that you can use. Actually this is what I did for my intro video to make my uh, what's it called, the tube for the extruder for the filament and the wires. That's what I used to make those. Is that, that very tool there. That's basically what the uh, just the bezier curve does. The other one that I want to show you is the surface. These are all similar, but the one that I use the most, the one that's most generic to use, that's probably the best one to use for basically anything, would be the NURB surface. And I'm going to move this back to the center. Okay, so we got that in the middle. So when you create the object, you have this. I'll make it flat again so you can see it better, but it's a, uh, basically a nicely curved little plane basically is what it is. And if you go into the edit mode, it shows all this weird looking stuff around it. And what that is is just basically the cage that shapes the object. And right now all of the objects are selected. And you can actually extract on this by selecting an edge. Just select all of those and then press E. Press E again. You can make all kinds of weird. If you select this other edge along here, wherever you extract, you have to select the entire edge, though. We can grab it and manipulate it and. 
do all kinds of weird stuff with it. And basically, you can. <laughs> it's really good to make all kinds of weird objects. Right now, I'm just kind of playing around with it, but you get kind of the idea of what it can do. So I'll, I'll show you also what's fun to do with this particular ob or tool is the uh, mirror tool. It's uh, where you can basically just create duplicate. You can only if you want to make a symmetrical object, you really only need to make half of the object and then the other half will be duplicated automatically. You can actually make uh, fully symmetrical on like all four different axes and let me show you that. It's uh we'll start out just making another nerve surface. Go into edit mode and make sure they're all selected by highlighting them all by pressing A and then press S and then Z and then zero. That also works with meshes to make the entire object everything flat. So now we have this flat object. I'm going to rotate it on the X 90 degrees. Negative. So the normal is facing us. So basically we just have a flat plane now. And what I'd like to do is add a modifier. Go to the mirror. And so if we... Right now it's in the center. And if we move it over to the right, we see that it's exactly duplicated. And so you, you can work on just half the object at a time, or you can click the little eye and it disappears. So if we wanted to just basically make this a little bit bigger. I was making a bigger plane right now, but I'm going to try to make a face. I'm not very good at creating realistic objects. So I'm going to undo that. I had one that was accidentally close to the other. So we go here. <laughs> I was supposed to go back, not sideways. Well, I was still selected. You gotta watch out for that. And also the proportional editing works with this as well. So if you just take this edge here, grab it, it kind of moves everything along. Realistically, if you're wanting to make something a little bit more precise, you're going to have to want to, want to have more sections in here than I have. I just I'm just doing a quick little example, kind of. But 
So with the mirror thing, I had that turned off. So do that. It kind of shows the whole entire thing there. Kind of messed that up. And if you play around with it, you'll get better at it. I haven't really played around with it a whole lot, so. That's basically kind of what that does. So I'm actually going to cancel the mirroring for now. And I'll show you what the mirroring can do with the mesh, because you can't actually do it with the surface object. You can use it to design and everything. We need to convert that to a mesh to get them to match together. So for Alt C, convert that to a mesh, and then go into edit mode. Oh, oh yeah, if you press A when your mouse is over any of these, it'll actually minimize or maximize whatever you have. Only quick tip, <laughs> or you can click on it. Anyway, so we go back to mirror and. If you click on merge, it doesn't do anything, or deselect merge, it doesn't do anything, but if you click on clipping, it kind of sticks them together, so that when you pull them apart, it kind of makes it weird like that. But being that we're, we turned it into a mesh, we can't really edit it anymore unless we want to manually edit it now. When you turn it into a mesh, it actually turns the curve into as many uh, faces that really is needed to actually make the curve successful. But it actually makes it into a nice smooth mesh, but I'm not really good at making faces or people or anything like that. But that's just an example of what the mirroring does. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, next week I'll be getting into uh, text and how to use that and how you can make different things with it. And It's basically the same process as the curves. You just create the text and you turn it into an object. But there's a few different things you can do with it. Because you can actually, depends on the font, you can actually load different fonts and things like that. And, Anyway, I'll get into that next week, and if you have any ideas for me that you want me to show you how to do something, just let me know in the comments, and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next week. Take care.